name is Prosper Juke, a lecturer at Takradi Technical University. I teach photography, I teach computer graphics, I teach animation for the degree students. Yeah, photography is a very important course studied over here under graphic design which allows students to produce their original images whenever they are given a tax to produce a visual communication material. Devices like smartphones, some of them are high-end that produce high-quality photographs as well as high-quality videos. So photography is an essential part of graphic design and it must be learned its production must be well understood and it must be properly captured, stored for future use. What a beginner needs to start photography is about the mind, the creativity of that individual. Because you can have a very good camera, but you cannot produce the best photographs, right? But a beginner needs at least a camera Perhaps with a laptop, that person should be able to do some good photography work. And you begin from there. And the equipment are very expensive. Uh, I'm not sure if your camera is picking some of the equipment I have on my decks here. They are high-end camera, full-frame cameras, which are very expensive. But a beginner does not need a very expensive camera to begin with. One thing taking the photograph with the camera is another thing editing the photograph to meet the desired purpose for which the photograph was taken. Adobe Photoshop is, to me, one of the world leading image editing software that many, many photographers employ to edit their photographs. But apart from the Adobe Photoshop, we have program like Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, which of late um, has come to handle a lot of editing challenges, especially if you have a lot of photographs to edit within a, a short period of time. It has the capability of uh, storing uh, image that is edited already. So, apart from this Photoshop and Lightroom, there are host of other uh, low-end application software that people use to edit photographs. I think the issue is not about which software you use to edit. It's about how well your photo is finished to meet the, the desire of the client, especially if the, the, the photograph is commissioned by a client for which you have to meet the expectation of the client. So, it doesn't matter which software you use, once you're able to meet the expectation of the client, regardless of whichever software, you should be paid for it. Photography can make a student self-employed. So do not, I say, do not dwell fully on photography. And this is not to say that photography is not a promising job. No, I practiced photography all my life for close to uh, 15 years still practicing because I love photography. It adds to my multimedia design, okay? It enhances my visual communication outputs. I produce my own image for whatever assignment commissioned by a client. And I hate students going to the internet to pick what conceptual photograph for the assignment. In fact, in my class, if you are seeing using pictures from the internet and your work seems to be the best work, trust me, that work will not attract the best of the mass because the photograph is plagiarized. You can be inspired by people's photographs on the internet, right? Get inspired and then develop your own concept around those existing images 
and with the help of either your smartphone. I encourage students even to use high-end smartphone in my class. I do, especially when I'm teaching the multimedia student or the animation student. I encourage them to use or bring to class those cameras because they are capable of producing good photographs. And I said earlier on in this interview, it's not really about the camera, but it's about the mind, right? You can't have a good camera, but you cannot produce a good photograph. But once you have a good mindset about how to produce good photograph, the device is just a technical device that is going to aid the manufacturing of the image.